Hi everyone and welcome to the Discipleship Series Episode 2. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Michelle. I just recently started a YouTube channel a few months ago and over the past couple weeks, the Lord has been impressing upon my heart the necessity for teaching on how to grow your relationship with Him. How do you be intimate with Him? So after you're saved, what do you do then? So if you're looking to grow your relationship with the Lord, please stick around. I think this is the perfect series for you. Um, I do have one other episode already out. I will link it in the description if you have not seen that yet. And as from the title, I'm sure you could tell that this one will be about obedience and submission. So I'm just going to pray real quick and then jump right in because my goal for these is to keep them simple and concise. So I'm just gonna get right into it. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your word, Lord. I thank you that we've got your scripture so readily available to us today that we don't have to question, we don't have to be confused. We can look and see for ourselves what your word says, Lord. And I thank you so much for that. I thank you because not everyone throughout history had that luxury. And it is a luxury, Lord, that I pray we never take for granted. God, I pray that as I'm doing this video and this teaching, Lord, that you would help me submit my flesh and I would speak what you want spoken, God, and that you would move on the hearts of the listeners to be able to uh, hear and accept this message and accept what you need them to hear from it, Lord. Um, Lord, we just invite you here with us. We invite you to commune with us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so what I'm going to do to talk about this, first, I'm going to go into basic definitions of love, obedience, and submission, just to make sure that we're all kind of talking about the same thing. So you all know what I'm talking about when I use certain words. Um, and then we will just jump into the scriptural references uh, telling us why it's important to be obedient. Um, so the first definition I want to get into is agape love. So anytime I'm speaking of love in this series, when I say my heart for this series is that we would love God as he first loved us. And the type of love I'm referring to is agape love. Um, some of you probably know in the Bible, many different forms of love are listed. I do not know all of them off the top of my head, but when we think of God's unconditional, unfailing love for us, we're thinking of agape love. And so this definition comes from BibleTools.org, and it says that agape love is manifested first towards God because it is dutiful, submissive, obedient love, one that does what is right regardless of how a person feels about it. In other words, agape love has a moral core rather than an emotional one. And so all growing up, my mother always told me, Love is an action, it's not a feeling. And this is what she's talking about. Love, our love for God, it's first and foremost a choice we make. It's not a feeling. It's something that we decide to do. And that's very important in this talk that we're having today. Now, obedience, I'm pretty sure all of you know what obedience means. But according to just Webster Dictionary, it's compliance with an order, request, or law, or submission to another's authority. So I believe that submission to another's authority is really uh, key to what we're talking about when we're talking about the Lord. And then I want to submission. What is submission then? If obedience is submitting to another person's authority, what does submission look like? The action or act of accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will or authority of another person. So I've actually read different definitions of agape love and agape love at its core is submission to the other person. It's saying your will is above mine. I'm going to choose you above myself and submitting to them. Um, so if we are going to just Based off of these definitions, if we want to agape love God, we are going to have to be obedient and submissive. Um, 
So now what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to jump into just some scriptures that talk about obedience and disobedience in the Bible and give you a few examples in the Bible of just why it is so important. So the first one being, I think when I first started following God back when I was a teenager, I thought of obedience as it's just this thing I have to do. If I'm going to follow God, I'm just going to be like, you You just have to be obedient just because it's what you do. You submit to authority and you follow it, right? But the closer I grew to God, my perspective shifted. And this is one of a, a really important point I want to make in this video, because I feel like that that first view I had was more legalistic. It was just, oh, this is what you have to do if you're going to follow God. You just follow him because he tells you to, and he's the authority and you have to do what he says, right? But the closer you get to him and the more you learn about his love and character, the more you want to be obedient. Faith creates obedience. As your faith grows, you, were, you will desire to be obedient to him. As you learn more about his character, you will desire to be obedient to him because you know, you know that you know that he knows better than you. <laughs> That's what I always, I've had these conversations with my husband so many times and I always tell him like, God is so much smarter than me. He's so much wiser than me. He knows everything in the world. If he tells me that I need to go do this, I trust his judgment far more than I trust mine. And I want to be obedient to that, right? And so a couple of, I've got two scriptures here that kind of talk about this. Um, in Romans 1, 5, he says, through him, we received grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for his name's sake. So if you truly have faith in him and you truly trust him and you truly know him, you're going to be obedient. Um, obedience is a fruit of faith. And then in Revelation 14, 12, we see again, he says, this calls for patient endurance on the part of the people who keep his commands and remain faithful to Jesus. The wording here, it says, who keep his commands and remain faithful to Jesus. Those two go hand in hand. If you're going to remain faithful to Jesus, you're going to keep his commands. And so that's another place where faith is linked to obedience. Um, and then another thing, like I said, if we're talking about having faith in, in God, we're going to be obedient to him. There are a couple of other scriptures I've got here that talk about, well, if you love him, you're going to be obedient to him. And honestly, I feel like if you have faith in him, you're going to also love him. Those Both of those things are going to happen. So in John 15, 14, he says, you are my friends if you do what I command. Um, I don't know if you guys watched the first episode uh, in John, I believe 15, 15, he mentioned that we are no longer, we're not called his servants. He calls us his friends. And I talked about a little bit about how just special that is, how special it is to be his friends, that we even have the ability to be God's friend. And so here, this is 15, 14. I <laughs> I didn't even realize it's the verse right before it. He says, you are my friends if you do what I command. And then in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commands. If you love him, you're going to be obedient to him. Now, a really important act of obedience listed in the Bible, we see that it is Jesus's obedience that allowed him to be a sacrifice and save us from our sins and give us a chance at eternal life. It was Jesus's obedience. If he had been disobedient, that wouldn't have happened. And so in Romans 5, 19, it says, for just as through the disobedience of one man that many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of one man, many will be made righteous. And I think there's so much in that scripture I could unpack, but I think just I also said in the first episode, if I see that something, that there's something that Jesus did, then he is my example. He is the one I'm following after. He is the one that I'm praying that I'll be made like, right? So if he did it to the point that he lost his life for it, 
I'm going to do that too. Just me, for me, just knowing that's what Jesus chose to do, that he was obedient in all of his ways, that makes me say, okay, if obedience was that important to Jesus, it needs to be that important to me. So that was just, see, I feel like obedience is one of those things. It's really easy to show in scripture. It's really easy to say, of course you need to do it, right? It's a lot harder to walk it out. So I think that, as far as scriptures go, I could list so many more. I will keep it to those um, because obedience is just something you see scattered throughout the Bible. I think we as Christians know that we are supposed to be obedient. That's a pretty that's pretty common knowledge, right? Um, so I think I'm going to stick to those scriptures. But walking it out, walking out obedience can be far more difficult. And so I want to look at something that happened in the Bible when someone was disobedient. And again, this is one of those, there's tons of examples. <laughs> there's tons of examples of people being disobedient in the Bible, but I've got this one for you. Um, I want to look at Saul for a minute, okay? And I'm not going to spend a ton of time here, but Saul was disobedient to God uh, more than once, right? Um, so God had actually chosen Saul. He was ready to, to raise him up as king and make him that, you know, everything he, he spoke over David, he, I, I believe God was actually ready to do for Saul, but Saul did not have a heart for the Lord. And because he, he, he didn't have a heart for the Lord, like David had a heart for the Lord. And so he kept being disobedient <laughs> over and over and over. Um, and so the first time, I, well, I don't know if this is the first time that he was disobedient, but one of the times that we see him be disobedient, he actually got sick of waiting on Samuel and made his own altar and sacrifice to the Lord. Um, and the reason that was a problem is because he was not a priest. That was not his position. His position was king. He had an anointing to be a king, not a priest, and he overstepped his bounds. And in Samuel 1 Samuel 13, we see Samuel say this to him. This, well, this is what the Lord said to him through Samuel. He said, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God with which he commanded you. For then the Lord would have established your kingdom of Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. Okay, so we see from this scripture that because of Saul's disobedience, he actually lost his entire kingdom. And that's why it ended up being given to David. David actually received the assignment that was meant for Saul because of his disobedience. Because God decided he couldn't use Saul for that because he wasn't obeying his commands. So I think obedience is such a vital foundational part of our walk with the Lord. If we truly want to be used by the Lord and we truly want to have a relationship with him and we want to grow closer to him and we want to love him and love others as he loves us, if we want to do all of these things, we are going to have to be obedient. And, and it's the thing about obedience, the thing about love, it's all choices. In his perfect love for us, he gave us all free will. And so it's up to us to take that free will and make the choice to do what is right and what is good and what is loving. And so that's where obedience is so important. Um, so now that I've quickly shown you in the scriptures, why we need, you know, where it says that we need to be obedient and just one, I only gave you one example of what happens um, if you're disobedient, but I feel like that one is pretty potent. And there, there are many, many more in the Bible where it's like, whoa, I think, I think, let me go back to this real quick. The consequences of disobedience are, at least for me, <laughs> they're usually more than I'm expecting. I, I, and I think it goes down to we don't understand the spiritual law of things. We just, we don't have the capacity to be able to understand everything in its entirety. And so our one action has a ripple effect and it impacts so many different things. And then when the Lord really starts showing you, because that's the thing, when you're just obedient, he'll start showing you, hey, this over here is happening because you made this choice. Once he starts doing that, you realize that your, your acts of disobedience impact you way more 
than you would expect and sometimes they impact other people that you wouldn't expect um and so i think that's imp important to remember obedience isn't just about loving god it's also about loving other people because our actions impact other people quite often so now just to go very briefly into how to implement obedience and submission into your daily life um First and foremost, like I said, you have free will. Obedience is a choice. So um, the actual act of obedience is just you doing it, right? That's really simple. But what I wanna talk about here is how do you know what he's telling you to do? Because the first step of obedience is first knowing what the instructions are to begin with, right? So that's where I wanna focus this segment. How do you know what the Lord wants you to do? Um, there's really two things that are really important here. The first is scripture. You need to know what scripture says about whatever it is you're doing or whatever it is you're asking the Lord about. What does the Bible say about it? And guys, we are so blessed that we can go on Google. And if you're not sure where it is in the Bible, you can Google it and it will pop right up instantly. Like it, it's crazy to think like all these people throughout history did not have this amazing luxury that we have. So first and foremost, what does scripture say about it? Second thing that's very important, you've got to know the voice of the Lord. Scripture says that his sheep know his voice, the voice of another, they will not follow. You need to be able to hear the Holy Spirit and follow the Holy Spirit. And I feel like that is extremely important for obedience because if you're at the grocery store and this person that's standing in front of you needs you to give them $20, the Holy Spirit needs you to give them $20. You have no idea what's going on in their life, but they need that 20. The only way you're going to know that you need to give it to them is not going to be a scripture. It's going to be, do you know how to hear the voice of the Lord? Are you going to be able to recognize when the Holy Spirit is urging you to do that? Are you going to be able to distinguish between the voice of the Holy Spirit and another's voice, if that makes sense? So I think that's it for this one. I want to try and keep this one a little bit shorter than the first one, especially since I feel like obedience Obedience is so much harder to walk out in your daily life than it is to learn about, right? It's easy to know what you got to do. It's harder to do it. And I do want to say this as an encouragement, guys. Um, obedience, it's, it's a struggle and it's just a choice you've got to make every day over and over and over. And I think we, I think everyone has their things that are more difficult for them, um, I have things that I struggle and it's like, I'll do well and then I fall back into it. I do well and I fall back into it. Like for example, I am a music lover. I love music and I love worship music and I listen to worship music, but it's like, sometimes I'll just fall off and I'll start listening to more secular music and I can feel the, conse the consequences. We were talking, I can feel the consequences in the atmosphere and I've got to like wake back up and be like, no, I can't be letting that in my house. So, <laughs> I just want to encourage you, uh, you know, everyone has their struggles and obedience is a lot easier said than done. But as long as you just keep, keep making that choice to be obedient. And if you fail and you, you screw up, repent and then move forward and keep doing better, right? Um, don't get too hung up on that, but just keep, keep making those strides, keep making those steps towards the Lord. Um, so I think I will just pray and that will be the end of this episode. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for this word, Lord. Right now, God, I pray that that, that fruit of self-control, God, that you would grow that in myself and the listeners, that that fruit of self-control so that we can be obedient, Lord, that you would grow that in us, Lord. I pray that the listeners and myself, God, I pray that you would help us hear your voice more clearly, that you would help us remember your word when we've read it, and that you would just help us walk out this, this walk that is following you, that you would help us keep your commands, that you would bring to mind if we're about to make a mistake, you would let us know, God, um, and that you would just guide us lovingly as you always do, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, guys, so if you've watched this far, thank you, and I will look forward to seeing you on episode three.